Talk, give us just one second. We hit the... Oh, we're just rebooting this camera. Okay. All right, so uh, a quorum is present. Let's begin. This is the May 19th, 2022 meeting of the Board of Directors of the Ann Arbor Area Transportation Authority. First order of business is to prove our agenda. Can I have somebody move that into the record? Second by, well, moved by Rich, seconded by Cairo. Any public comment this evening? Have anybody who has any um, public comment who's live can step up to the podium. If you are remote by phone, uh, press star nine or the raise hand icon if you are on Zoom. And we'll start with the people in the room. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, everyone. Robert Pulowski, and I'm from Southgate and Wayne County. Uh, regards to what I said at the first public comment um, portion of the meeting last meeting, uh, the millage is going in August. I did speak with some residents around the Yipsy area, and I also talked to a local woman down in my area. She works in the city of Southgate, but she lives in the Ann Arbor Yipsy area. And I've been trying to educate workers in the city that come to Southgate to work, but what they're up against here in their own city that they live in. I've also been working with some other people, some residents within Yipsy to get them involved with the millage. Um, it's definitely something that, you know, was not expected to hear there was you know some disagreements about the millage but we'll get there i mean there's a lot of things with the millage that we're up against we need a new transit center for yipsy which is a current project that we're trying to fix it's something that's been need needed for years and we're finally getting it with this primary in august i don't think november is the way to go there's a lot of congress people i'm working with and they're all going for their august primary so i think it's a great job that you went for what you did last meeting to go for the august primary than the november primary because there's a lot of races going on this is going to be a controversial year so i'm going to keep up uh, I, I would just want to encourage our board for anyone that does know any neighbors or anybody that's really good with promoting or public outreach to encourage residents in this city about the millage because i still see gaps with people not knowing about the millage especially when i have to educate more people in the city just and i'm not getting paid for it which at the same time there should be a campaign going there should be a campaign going for this regardless if someone's getting paid or not there should be a volunteering campaign for this especially if nobody knows what's going on but Please just reach out to the residents, encourage them about the millage so mm -hmm. at least they know what they're voting on, especially when we get towards August. Like I said, two more uh, two board meetings back, I'm going to continue my promoting for the millage. I'll even go out with signs at US 23 in Washington and let people know myself. That is not a big deal, but just encourage the residents. That's all I ask today. But as always, thank you for the time and opportunity to speak. Thank you. Nobody else in the room, Deb, do we have anybody online? Nope, there's no one else online. All right. We'll close the public comment then and go to general announcements. Any general announcements from anybody on the board this evening or the staff? Not seeing any, we'll move to the consent agenda. We have our board meeting minutes from the April meeting along with the committee meeting summaries. Can I have somebody move those into the record? Kathleen, seconded by Jesse. All those in favor of the consent agenda, raise your hand. Opposed? Passes unanimously, thank you. We'll move on then to policy monitoring and development. 3.1, monitoring improvements. And we have a docket, uh, I'm sorry, document in our packet from Mr. Alamein and he'll walk us through it. Thank you. Mike, go ahead. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the policy uh, monitoring task force had a meeting yesterday um, and we basically went through um, in a fair amount of detail, what you have in your board package. It's too bad we couldn't have scheduled that, uh, that meeting a little earlier. It was a little bit more time ahead of the meeting, but it, it was, a, I think, a very good meeting. Um, if you saw in the package, there are really three segments that we discussed having to do with policy monitoring. Number one was the policy mod, uh, um, a, a chart, a color coded chart that Rosa Maria had prepared for us uh, that it 
I think is best called a policy monitoring trends, where you can see past monitoring reports of the same policy and how that how the different uh, elements of that have been rated and how that changed over time. Uh, the, if you look at the one for 1922, 19, 2022 in the uh, package, it really is not one that anybody has looked at yet. It's, it's a work in progress that Matt has been working on and actually will be uh, part of next month's agenda. But we did use um, the last year's to, to actually test drive the, the report, the, the revised format for using the report that is really number three in your package, which is the policy monitoring worksheet. I'll just quickly mention number two, which is policy development opportunities that Matt put together. And really the intention there is to document past monitoring reports and the issues that came up in those reports that probably merited some follow-up. And um, Matt has uh, put that together. We really didn't have much time to go over it, but we th I th the idea is certainly a good one. We need to be following up what we concluded in past reports, and we really haven't been doing that very well. So as I said before, what we spent most of our time on was the worksheet. Um, the worksheet, I think, in general worked very well, and we thank Rosa Maria profusely for doing such a good job on it. It, it was really worked nicely. It's in the form of an Excel spreadsheet that you couldn't really see by looking in your board package, but we did test drive it as an Excel spreadsheet, and it, it was generally very nice. Um, it, it kind of almost holds your hand in going through each sub policy and ask the questions regarding the, um, the uh, CEO's interpretation and what you should uh, look at in terms of, of judging his interpretation. And then the evidence that's presented and it gives guidelines for presenting the evidence uh, for evaluating the evidence. And basically, if, if you have it in front of you, I hope you can see your answer yes or no uh, regarding was the, um, um, was the interpretation of a good one? Was the evidence good? And if, if you think that there needs to be some improvement in one of those, there's an area to, to make comments. And furthermore, if you can see in the um, the order of it is suggested to be kind of a bottoms up approach, taking the, the, the ones that are in more detail that, that, that wrap up into uh, like 2.1, 1.1, et cetera. And, and finally up until the, uh, to the very top level, which is the 2.10. And I think doing it in that order really does make some sense. Um, but it doesn't have to be in that order. So as I said, I think we learned a lot. Um, it helped us. We could be more thorough. It really helped us ask the questions of ourselves to, to answer the questions on the form. And um, it, it, it's very systematic. I, I believe, and I think our committee believed it really made uh, evaluating the monitoring reports uh, really much more effective. However, it did take us more time. It was a time I think well spent, but the potential downside in that, in, in my opinion, and I really want to hear um, also a comment from the rest of the task force. In, in my opinion, the, the potential downside to that is the, is it going to take, because I think it will take longer, um, because it requires you to be more thorough and think it through more thoroughly. Um, the time spent will be more, and will that be too much time for the board? In fact, will that potentially be counterproductive 
because it's maybe taking more time and being discouraging in terms of the, the uh, board members not having enough time to do it. Um, so, and what, once we get to where we want to have the board go through it, and we certainly want your feedback too. We didn't, we were hoping, we are hoping at some time, which I think will be next month, to really come up with some tweaking. We had some ideas about tweaking it and changing some things around uh, to make it to where we could actually recommend it to the board. We're not quite there yet. We're hoping we can be there at the next board meeting. But we, ha we had very good comments, very good ideas and uh, about, about it when we went through. And I think um, we're almost there. Um, I guess I would like to hear other members of the task force uh, add on to, to what comments I had. I probably missed some important things. Um, I'd like to hear your reactions too and for the board before we hear the, anything coming back from the board. So the other, other task two, force members? Yeah, the other two task force members um, are uh, Kathleen and Raymond. So could we hear from one of you? All right, Kathleen and I just did rock, paper, scissors, and I guess I go first. So okay. Um, <laughs> So uh, yeah, I, I, first of all, I wanna thank uh, Rosa Maria and Rose Mercier for kind of helping us through this process. Uh, you know, the idea is to really kind of align with policy governance and looking at each one of our policies um, line by line and, you know, being deliberate about whether Matt's interpretation is reasonable and if the evidence he provides is verifiable. Um, and then we just pretty much go through those one by one, yes or no. And then, you know, if you don't think either one of those conditions is true, then you would provide, you know, comments on it. And then that is what will spark the discussion at the board meeting. So as Mike mentioned, you know, this, we had wanted to streamline the process and we think this is a much more, um, straightforward and deliberate process, but it's not necessarily going to be less work, <laughs> admittedly. Um, because really, you know, our surveys as they are now are kind of more global. They're just kind of big picture, you know, what's working, what's not working, whereas this really makes us kind of look uh, at a more granular level about, about everything. Um, and then I think as we've been discussing, and, and I think even um, our secretary, Jesse, is interested in this, is really tracking the trends over time. So, you know, Rosa Maria put on that uh, spreadsheet, as Mike mentioned, the kind of green, yellow, red uh, to see where we have year over year progress or where we're maybe, you know, stagnating a little bit. And if there's some opportunity there for some discussions. Um, and then the other thing, as Mike mentioned, is really for the things that we highlight as a board where we need to go back and revisit our policies, this will hopefully flag those for us a little bit more um, succinctly as opposed to just kind of these you know, we have these kind of circular discussions sometimes at the board. We say we, oh, we should do something about that, and then we never do anything about it. So this will really highlight those and bring them to the fore for our consideration. Um, so I think, you know, my interpretation, my feeling is we're about 90% of the way there. Like Mike said, we have a, after giving it a test run, we all had a couple suggestions on tweaks. We'll meet again to kind of iron those out before we bring it back to the board, I think. But uh, um I think we're happy with the way it's going so far. Kathleen? Um, yeah, I agree with everything that's been said. It's just so important to remember, even though we've already hinted at that there may be a little bit more labor involved mm -hmm. because of the way we're asking board members to be more thoughtful about each and every uh, policy and sub-policy, it really speaks to the fact that we are not involved operationally. How we guide the agency is through our policies. It's the most, to me, one of the most important jobs that we have is our policy monitoring because it's how we determine the direction of the agency and how the agency is performing. So um, I just hope everyone keeps an open mind and when, it, when we can roll it out to you, please be honest with your feedback and really let us know what you think. Um, 
but I think it's a really good thing for us to do. For me personally, I know that I struggled with the surveys because they were so broad and they were so general, generalized. And I felt maybe I wasn't giving enough feedback or the correct feedback or missing things in, in, in that. And I think that this will help alleviate that. And the questions are directly at the top of the form in terms of what are the things that we're supposed to be thinking about with regards to, um, whether the re whether it's a reasonable interpretation, whether or not the data uh, was enough or uh, whatever it is that we think. And so I think it's going to not only drive um, our ability to be a better board, but I think it's going to drive the CEO and the staff to uh, be better with their interpretations and with their data points. So thank you. Let me oh, add a couple more uh, observations that I had. Um, as I said, it really made me think more because you have those criteria in front of you about how to, uh, whether the interpretation is reasonable and whether the, the data um, was, or the evidence was verifiable, it makes you really think more. It made me answer a few more no's uh, than yes, that, that I would have without thinking about it as much as I did, that's not necessarily bad, but it all, some of those notes actually related to, I think not related to actually the policies themselves were not uh, in some cases, um, I, I think worded correctly uh, or, or worded well enough to make you, for, for Matt to be able to, um, interpret and, and or maybe some of them just are, would be impossible to have any kind of verifiable evidence. Um, so I, I think this will also result in, which is good, rethinking some of the details and some of the overall policies. And, and to me, that's a very positive thing. Um, let me also mention that a fourth item that's not in your packet and we really didn't have time to discuss it and it, because it's still under development is, of course, after you fill out the form and people discuss it at the meeting, then how do, what do we conclude? Do, do we conclude that uh, the policy was adhered to? Do we, or are there some exceptions to it? Uh, you know, the vote at the end that we're used to doing, um, one, two, three, four right now, but I, it may be different in the future. But, Anyway, we still uh, have yet to really attack that, that which is really the, the end point of the, uh, of the monitoring report. But we'll be doing that too. Um, exactly when we'll be able, we will probably won't be able to bring that part back um, quite as soon as we will be able to bring back uh, the other parts, particularly the filling out the monitoring form. But, uh, that's obviously a very important thing that uh, we are not going to ignore. And I would really like to see if people had some opportunity to look at these forms, to look at the three different components that we're talking about, uh, in the two, including the two others, than just filling out the monitoring uh, worksheet. Um, and, and any questions you have of us from what we've just reported. So please, I'd, we'd like to hear your comments. Folks, Rich has got a hand up right away. Go ahead, Rich. Testing. Oh, this thing's been on this whole time. Good thing I didn't uh, make any weird noises. Um, so one, I wanted to thank you all for doing this. I think this is great. Uh, I had a couple questions. One is, when we fill out these monitor reports, I've always wondered, is this supposed to be anonymous feedback? It isn't, okay. So then the next question I had is, um, I like the spreadsheet format. Is the plan maybe to put this into say like a Google Sheets and we each get a tab and we just fill it in that way? Or is it that you're gonna actually send a spreadsheet out to each of us to fill out each time? Yeah, the way it's working now, and I think it will work well, is Rosa Maria designed this Excel spreadsheet 
which we filled out, and then we can send it back in and it can be consolidated. Um, and um, putting it, I mean, it can be done in other formats and, and, and with other techniques like um, uh, Google, Google, but um, it's right now in Excel and it would be more work and more time <laughs> To, to put it in another form, we think it works pretty well as it is. Uh, well, actually, I'm not asking for it to be a different format. So oh. Google Sheets, it looks just like Excel, uh, oh. but I'm just thinking, frankly, putting myself in, well, in Rosa Marie's shoes, like if it's in a Google Sheet, it's actually a lot easier to compile everything. And so I'm saying like this form, for instance, this example, is it would be copied in every tab. And there's one for like, one for me, one for Kathleen, and one for ever. So it's all consolidated in one sheet in Google. And then I don't, then we're not emailing these attachments all over the place. Um, so it's just a, a, a suggestion on how to maybe streamline the process in that. Uh, because I am terrible with email and getting attachments. And <laughs> if I have a Google sheet I can log into, there's probably a hard chance that I'll do it. Okay. And, and Rich, it might be good if you and uh, Rosa Maria talked directly about that sheet. I'm not all that familiar with Google Sheets. I've had some experience with it. Probably Rosa Maria knows a lot more than I do, and I know you do. Oh, yeah, no worries. Happy to. <laughs> Thanks. Do you have any other comments? Other board members? I think Rosa Maria has something to say. Oh, sure. Rosa Please. Maria, go right ahead. I just wanted to um, say that we're starting with spreadsheets, but we're looking into uh, better technology. Uh, we're looking into smart sheets in um, a more um, collaborative platform so that you don't have to receive the document, fill it, then send it. So that's coming, but for now, we just have the spreadsheets. Oh, that's okay. great. Thanks. Others? Jesse. I'm glad to hear that other our tools are being explored. I don't. It's been a while since I've had to buy a Microsoft license, but I don't. Uh, you know, unless the <laughs> I, I want to make sure that the authority is providing us with whatever tools uh, we need. And last time I knew I did have to pay for Microsoft, but like I said, I, I get it as part of my job now. So um, um, I don't know if uh, Google. I know it's a free service, something that is accessible to board members without requiring pe people to uh, purchase additional resources. I think would be important. Kyra? Yeah, I just wanted to say that I really appreciate the snapshot. I think this will be really helpful moving forward. Um, it, it'll be helpful to track in those monitoring reports where we've determined that there's partial compliance or non-compliance, but I still think um, we'll have to think about the best way to follow up on the rationale, why we made those decisions in the past, and if those things have changed and how. I think that's been kind of the hardest part about consistently thinking about the monitoring reports when we've been out of compliance is what did we say last year? Um, is it different this year? And so I, I don't think it's possible to capture this in the snapshot, but at least this will be a way for both staff and board members if there is partial compliance or non-compliance to kind of flag in our brains that maybe we can go back and look at why that was and compare. So I just really appreciate this tool. I think it will be really useful. Thank you. I guess I have a couple of points uh, or questions, points to raise myself, which number one, thank you for all the hard work from Rosa Maria and Rose Mercier and the task force members. I think uh, we are uh, I, I really like the way we're progressing with this, and I think this is going to be a really good, useful tool for the board going forward. Um, one of the is one of the issues, and I think we're going to run into this with the monitoring report we have in front of us this evening. I think one of the tools, I guess, that we've lacked in the past, and I think one of the things we continuously run into when we do monitoring reports and discuss them. You know, I'll, I'll sometimes call out an outlier of an, uh, a response, like somebody, everybody will say all the time, and then one person will say rarely, right, or something like that. And then the, I say, 
you know, what's up with the rarely? And then somebody will say, well, this is how I interpreted it. And everybody else went the other way. And when we talk about that at the board meeting, it's, you know, it's reasonable for somebody to say, oh, I guess you could say that. So, and I'm wondering if we can, now that I want to put more work on the task force's plate or Rose, Rosa Maria's plate, but I'm wondering if we can cut down, and I think we're going to run into this when we, I think there's a couple examples in this monitoring report when we talk about this. We had such a diverse um, range of answers for some of these in particular here. It begs, you know, it, you have to, I would think, chalk it up to there's different interpretations of the same language among board members. And I wonder if there's a way we can use this tool or some ways. So if somebody has a question like, I'm inter am I interpreting this correctly? I see how Matt's interpreted it, but am I interpreting this in terms of like, I think Matt's meeting this or, or not meeting this. Is there a way that that board member can get feedback? I haven't, I guess, fleshed that out all together in my own head in terms of uh, who would be sort of like the ombudsman or something like that, like the in, you know, interpreter in chief. It, it would be, um, maybe you could always reach out to Matt and say like, you know, I'm interpreting in this way. Is that how you're judging it? Or maybe there's some, you know, without, violating the Open Meetings Act, there's a way we can have some dialogue to make sure we clarify our own thinking and at least if not come to a consensus, um, people have a forum to raise questions. So we run into that, uh, if not every month regularly throughout the year, throughout our monitoring cycle. And I'm wondering if there is a way we can conceptualize cutting down on some of those uh, misinterpretations or you know divergent opinions so that we're all kind of on the same page when we say yes most of the time all the time rarely sometimes etc uh, so give that some thought i again i don't i really hate it when people dump a problem and they don't have a solution for it but that's what i'm doing i guess right now i haven't thought through it uh, myself but i'm wondering if if you guys have given that any thought and if there's a way we can use this tool to talk about that a little bit or or incorporate that into this tool so um, uh, I mean, Kathleen, Eric, go, let me, or Mike go ahead um, okay I'll I'll go first sure what you're bringing up what we what's on the agenda tonight is not I don't think well suited for this form because this form is really designed for the board members to evaluate what Matt has presented to us in terms of his interpretation of the policy and the uh, evidence that he uh, presents the back up. Uh, I, and I agree, Mike, I'm, I, I guess I'm just, that's what I'm saying. Is there a way to reconceptualize this so we can get out in front of it? Because usually what I'll see are comments from somebody after the fact saying, this isn't clear or this isn't fair to hold the CEO to this standard or something like that. And it's after the fact and, and it doesn't, you know, so that it's another 12 months before we get back to that policy to, to reevaluate it. And is there a way we can do that before all the votes are in, et cetera, and, and we can share that. But I guess I, I fully get it, Mike. It's not suited to that right now. And maybe there's, maybe it's a separate tool or something else we can use and not this, but, but I, I guess I'm trying to think outside the box a little bit. Yeah, as, as far, I think all of the uh, ones that Matt presents to the board uh, can can use this form. Um, and I guess we do need to think more about what you just said, um, particularly trying to clarify that and ahead of ahead of things, I think will be more difficult than trying to have an issue spring out and then followed up later in terms of some disagreements on how people have answered and, or interpreted something. Um, I don't have any answers to that right now, uh, but that's certainly something to put on our plate. I, that's fine with me. And, and Kathleen, Kathleen and Ray, please go ahead. Yep, they both had their hand up. I was gonna say, I think that this form addresses your issue partially in that we're not asking people to say always, most of the time, sometimes, never. Uh, the questions are, um, 
is this interpretation reasonable? And then you have four questions and you either say yes or no. Is there a verifiable evidence? And then you say yes or no, not sometimes, always, or never. And then there's a part to put why do you feel if it's no, it's like, why do you feel that? What is the, ev is the evidence out of date? Do you feel the interpretation is unreasonable because of X, Y, and Z? Um, so I, I think in some ways that might address your concern, but it, I do hear what you're saying, um, and maybe we need to take a deeper dive on it. Or, or even like a fourth column here that says, this wasn't clear to me, and this is you know why I, I think it's X or something like that. Or, I interpreted, this was a tricky part to interpret. I'm interpreting it as this, just something like that. I mean, some of you know, the comments that we have, but um, I guess I'm searching for a way to, you know, get ahead of that, but maybe the really the answer is if it's unclear to some board members and not others or some, or, or it's clear, everybody thinks it is clear, but the interpretations are that different, then that's something we raise at the monitoring meeting or the monitoring report to say, yeah, let's fix this language, and you know, one committee or another should take it up. Okay, maybe, that's just, we did maybe that's talk. part of the follow-up that we just need to do that we don't do in the past. One well, one thing we did actually talk about it at our meeting was the possibility of adding another column to address something that isn't being addressed in what's already there. So perhaps that would might help. Yeah. Other comments, questions? All right. Well, again, great job, Mike and Task Force, Raymond, Kathleen. Thank you very much. Rosa Maria and Rose Mercier, wherever you are, thank you. Appreciate it. We'll move on then to uh, 3.2, which is 3.0 to 3.8 governance process policies monitoring report. So we have a long, lengthy Monitoring report in the packet starting on number 24 of the packet. This is the board judging how we are doing ourselves uh, against our own policies and how we're doing with it. A, div a, a divergent range of opinion on some of these, and I'm looking forward to the discussion. Who wants to start? Anybody with any particular comments or questions or uh, thoughts about the monitoring report? I highlighted a couple, like 3131. And I think this goes back to the point I was making a second ago, which is some of these probably need to be addressed in terms of cleaning up verbiage because either they're out of date or maybe they're not functional the way they used to or they're just kind of pro forma or one way or another, but 3131 strikes me as that. So we had an almost perfectly even split among the respondents in terms of do we always do this most of the time, some of the time rarely. So you can see it's just this, you know, big split up pie here. Um, and I can see a justifiable case for any of those votes, quite frankly, which probably tells me either 3131 either needs to be eliminated, cleaned up, simplified or uh, somehow made functional if, if, if it's not already. So if we have this kind of range of opinion about whether or not we're complying with the policy, probably something wrong with the policy. It's not, it's not the board members so, um, and, and not their interpretation. But any, any thoughts on that in terms of what we do with that particular policy? Because I'm, I'm not faulting anybody for their vote uh, and I won't ask who voted what, or, or, but that's what's jumped out at me with these and others where there was a wide range of opinion about our compliance. Uh, well, I mean, I, I'm the one that put one of the, the responses in there. Uh, my comment was that we are flexible enough that we don't always utilize this rubric for enabling discussions. But I think that goes to what you're saying is like, should we very, should we be very strict about that or not? Well, I mean, it, yeah, it, you're right. The strictness of it, I mean, what the policy suggests is that we all sit here and, you know, we chant these three questions and say, everybody, yeah, we don't do that, right? I mean, these are the underpinnings of the policies themselves. 
uh, and, and whether or not the board should take on the work. I mean, I think when we think about, all right, is this our issue? Is this a staff's issue? Is this a joint issue? This kind of, this is the guidance for it. So maybe instead of having it the way it is, we, or, or the way it's worded, maybe we restructure the language to say, hey, look, you know, we will continue to be guided by these questions or something like that, which is a more even flexible standard uh, than kind of making sure like, all right, there's some cloud here who all, you know, thinks the, what is the nature of this issue and, you know, who thinks that what's the value that we don't, we don't recite those before the discussion. Right. So what that's, but that's kind of what this suggests. So I can see where people say rarely or sometimes, but maybe we just need to make this more practical and functional by rewording it. Feel free to disagree with me. I mean, if anybody thinks anything different, but maybe this is one, um, for one of the policies, maybe I think maybe the governance policy, the governance committee to look at. Kyra, I was just going to say that it seems like questions one through three in that section kind of are just it's trying to get at the heart of is this a board issue? Is this and I think I can't remember where it is, but I think we already do have a policy that kind of speaks to that before we undertake something. Is it under the board's? purview so I think it could this whole section could be simplified and it doesn't need to be itemized in this way it's just trying to make sure that we're not taking something or discussing something or making policy about something that isn't under our umbrella and that we haven't already decided before but yeah no I think that's what this is supposed to drive which is to make sure that we have a policy where we say all right let's let's take a look at these questions we don't again we don't recite these out loud and and they don't attach them to any document but they do kind of guide our thinking in, in, in terms of whether or not we're going to take on an issue or defer this to staff and i think this guides the staff as well i think matt probably refers to this and says all right is this us is this them etc kathleen well what's fascinating about this particular set of policies is that there isn't any information given. This isn't CEO driven, this is board driven. So when a CEO uh, gives us his interpretations, we have something to read, something to digest, something to compare and answer. Here, it's all on the impetus of the board and our own personal experiences and what we've witnessed happening in board meetings and committee meetings. And so I think it makes it a little bit more challenging and maybe we should relook at um, either unpacking it in a shorter amount of like in two portions so because it's an extremely long policy and it's a lot to digest. Um, or relooking at the policies themselves and finding out do we need to answer all of these questions is doesn't need to be in the policy manual or are there are there policies in here that are similar to each other enough in wording that maybe we can uh, smoosh them together so um, and my also my hope is is that with the new form that we have because we won't be saying never sometimes always uh, it's yes or no and why if it's no why are you saying no that may also help with this particular set of policies so Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's when we first started monitoring policies, we usually would have, we had a schedule where we would, we would break up like the 3.0 policies and the 4.0 policies. And so we had at least one of these or like if every, not every month, maybe every other month or we, we'd have a couple at a time. So we did break it up. And then I, f I don't remember the discussion, but we decided like, hey, let's just do it all one time once a year and we we came up with this and now we've got a 40 pager that we tackle once a year instead of breaking it up so you know i'd be interested in people's thoughts you know is this better or is it better to break it up so we have a you know one or two every month that we that we go through um i can't remember if anybody else but i can't remember why we decided if um why we decided to consolidate it into one report but but i think it was maybe we were just tinkering with it Others? So is the action to have governance take a look at that particular policy? We will. We will. Yeah, okay. 3131. Okay. Any other questions on any other section of the entire monitoring report? 
Uh, I think somebody did ask, I think we somebody said most of the time about um, whether we do a, um, somebody, well, in response to 3.26, do we do an annual review of the CEO? Yes, we do do that. I, I send that out to everybody and pretty much everybody gives me feedback and, and the written report. So we do do that. Uh, and then somebody said, I don't think we were really involved with the recent rider fair changes. And I, I beg to differ, we were very involved in that. Uh, so I'm not sure who put that in, <laughs> or maybe you were asleep during those committee meetings, I'm not sure. But yes, we were very involved in the rider fair changes and the fair policy and voted on it. Well, that was actually me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, actually, pretty much always counts for me. So the, the reason why I brought up the, the recent fair changes is uh, maybe my memory misserves, but I thought it was um, though like we did vote to approve them, but the changes were kind of done without input in regards to like amount or whether we needed it or not. So that's why I made that comment because uh, actually I think I remember another board member not being very happy with like the process that was taken when that fair change occurred, even though, yes, we as a board approved it, but I think it was like the, the process leading up to that, that we were kind of left in the dark. Anybody else recall being satisfied or unsatisfied with our deliberation, debate, due diligence on fair policy, Raymond? Well, I think I was one of the ones that was objected to the fair change. Um, and, you know, I, I to me, that's just how the vote goes, right? Sometimes, you know, you're on the losing side of a vote and that's fine. If the rest of the board felt adequately informed and felt like the process was transparent, then I was just the dissenting vote. So that's fine. Okay. Any other comments to anything else in the board packet? Eric, I have to comment. Yep, Mike, go ahead. Um, and of course, there's a there's a few others. <laughs> um, um, and, you know, like three point seven point two, where we where their answers are all over the map. One thing that might, um, first of all, when we have these divergent uh, opinions. We really do need to look at the specific policy to see if there's a problem there. But another problem is, is I think, uh, lack of knowledge. And, um, and, uh, and there, there's probably other reasons. But I would maybe one thing to consider is where anybody votes never, rarely, or maybe even some of the time uh, to explain why particularly if it's never or uh, rarely, why they think that. Because in some cases, it just may be an interpretation. In other cases, it may be some lack of knowledge. And I, th I would hope that would come out if we require a comment on, on voting that way. It just, I, I just, as you have pointed out, I think we really need to look at the ones where there's a, a great divergence. 3.7.5 is another one where there was a lot of always <laughs> and, and one never and one, well, my, well, yeah, one most of the time, which is okay. But. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to know who said we never do an audit task force. Whoever said But I, I did actually ask if we had one. So I didn't, I didn't vote on a never, but so the 372 and 375 comments from me, because I was like, I didn't, do we have an executive committee? I don't. We, we, we don't originally set it up that way, but we've never kind of activated it. So okay. I, I actually, Mark, we probably need to eliminate. Yeah, that okay. One. And then the audit task force, I was like, I, I was pretty sure that we do have one, but I was just calling it out of like, I, I don't know. I, it seems like it just forms. I think the we have a new ends. volunteer for the next year's <laughs> audit task force. <laughs> this would be good for you to get involved in. <laughs> Another one that's very strange is 3.8.3, 3, 
about developing the bu budget by June 30th. I mean, that's a legal requirement. <laughs> and somebody said, rarely. Well, and, if you look at the- a couple it, of people it, said most of the time. Well, but, but Mike, if you read the words carefully, I don't think it's talking about the, the rides budget. It's talking about the board's budget. So the line item within the budget oh, of the oh, board's oh, spend. Okay, you're right. It is misleading, though. The board will develop yeah. its budget by June 30th every year. Yeah, you're right. I misinterpreted it. So I, I think, but it is a little misleading because that's, I started to look at it that way myself. Um, and and what we typically do is just kind of leave the amount that we dedicate yeah. to board education or board travel or conferences or what have you, just it usually stays static from year to year. So we don't develop anything. You know, that's probably a line item for us to do leading up to June 30th, which is, you know, how many people would be interested in going to conferences, how many people, you know, what kind of board education do we need to do, maybe in the couple of months leading up to that. So we, by June 30th, can say we need X amount of money to go into the budget for board stuff, and then that's our budget. So I I could see where the confusion would come in, but I think that is, uh, uh, you know, that that's that's what I think that refers to. Mm -hmm. I think one other one that I, uh, one other one I wanted to call out was three four two, uh, in terms of the board starting its development for its agenda and um, whoever put some of the time I, I would uh, I would like to hear suggestions for and, and anybody really if they've got suggestions on three four two how we can improve that one I'm I'm honestly interested in hearing that I just wanted to call that out. I will go on the record and say, not it. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting defensive, Rich. You don't have to get defensive. It's all love. All right. Any other comments or questions about the monitoring report? Any, besides the ones I think maybe the governance committee can take it up at his next meeting, which is uh, looking at some of these ones that were, we had a wide range of opinions in terms of our compliance level and, and um, thinking about how we might either revise those to make those functional, streamline them, or, or think about eliminating them. The other one I saw was 3.4.5. Um, there was a rarely and then a always and a most of the time. I think that is a hard one because we as board members don't know what other board members are doing. If someone is submitting um, a request for board discussion, that's not usually something we're all privy to. Yeah, maybe that's another one that's not necessarily functional. I mean, it, at least it's not a standard we need to hold ourselves to just for that reason. I mean, I think it's supposed to encourage members, hey, get any changes you want or anything you want to talk about out there a couple of days in advance, but is it worth monitoring? Yeah. Kathleen? I wanted to ask a history question. So I wasn't here when we developed policy monitoring in these sets of policies, but I know that when we've talked to Rose about our other policies, they've been... Uh, they were bound or they came from sets of policies that were already written by Carver. And I'm wondering these policies that we're looking at with regards to our own governing, did we develop these on our own or did we partially use the, the a template that was provided by Carver? And is that where part of the problem is coming in? Well, we, we started with a template that Rose Mercier provided us, not, uh, and this, it, it was an amalgamation of different, and it, there wasn't a whole lot of transit industry templates out there. Uh, the ones that were out there were unsatisfactory to us uh, and were very scant in our, but so this, I mean, to be, I don't know, I'm gonna toot our own horn, but I think we are kind of leading the way for transit policy governance in the country. I mean, I think, I don't know if anybody's as developed as we are. So we're kind of breaking new ground, which is probably part of the reason there's no, you know, there's no model really to follow. Uh, and, and so we started out with a bare, very scant bare bones template of policies that were very, um, 
generic for transit stuff. We got suggestions here and there, but you know, I would say three quarters of these that were just board deliberation stuff. Um, Matt contributed a lot. The staff contributed a lot of these in terms of what they thought. We debated a lot about the ends, as you know. Uh, a lot of the board assessment and the or the, yeah these uh, uh, governance pro uh, governance process policies and the board management delegation policies in 4.0 probably were more template related than some of the others but you know one and two were certainly mostly us uh, but yeah I think we've always tweaked these along the way to make sure that they're fitting what we want to do Jesse? One that was kind of on my mind was a three, two, one, uh, that the board shall serve as the authoritative linkage between the ownership and the operational organization. I don't, I was, I've left a, a comment um, below. I, I realized I I'd neglected to identify which policy it was regards to, but it, it was this one. I think is a, um, and I think it's telling that, you know, more people said some of the time as opposed to always. And I think it's a particular, it might be particular to us because there has to be so much interaction between our ownership and the operational staff to do our job or rather to do their job that like staff must coordinate you know our own our ownership is made up of city you know of the city and you know they go through i don't know i wasn't really sure how to reconcile that that um i don't know if that's as much of an issue with other organizations that use policy governance but you know there are all these meetings between our between uh, the operational or, uh, organization and people that might be considered our ownership it's just because of the nature of their job yeah no it's uh it's the i'm glad you brought this policy up because i the the wording of it is and i'm specifically concentrating on the word authoritative right so yeah, there's a linkage between the staff and, and the operational staff and maybe counterparts at the city or city officials and Ipsy or Ann Arbor, Ipsy Township, in order for them to keep them apprised of what they're doing and how things are going. And, and But I guess I, I interpret the word authoritative to mean, authoritative to mean, does, does the board or the staff have the final say in you know, whether or not they can make adjustments based on getting that linkage. So in other words, I, I read this, that we are, we have taken on the responsibility for making the decisions about the, which way the direction of the, um, the organization is going to go and not the staff. So, uh, you know, the staff couldn't pop over to a meeting at one of the municipalities and they say, we want to do this. And, and the staff says, yep, okay, we're going to do that. The proper response, in other words, would be, I'll take that to my board and see if that's consistent with the policy. And specifically, I would expect Matt to come back or uh, whoever, if you know Matt's gone, the acting CEO to come to us and say, I have been requested to do this. This seems to conflict with the ends that you want us to achieve. I want to know how you feel about that and, and et cetera. So the authoritative linkage to me is still with us. Uh, even though they have tons of meetings between their counterparts with the municipalities, they wouldn't make a change that would violate the ends or uh, adjust, modify, or uh, and otherwise, you know, uh, disregard our ends without talking to us first or any of the policy. That's how I was kind of thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Mike. Yeah, I wanted to make one more comment. Um, I think a good indication that, that you mentioned that maybe this is too long and too much to do at one time, and probably a good uh, support to that position is the fact that only five board members uh, filled it out. And th this is the board looking at itself. And, so with only five board members answering it, I don't know if we can conclude that this is a good representation of what the board thinks. I mean, it's half the board. Uh, we really got to have, particularly on the ones where the board is talking about itself, we've got to, I think we have to have all the board members 
participate. And I got to believe that one reason is this took a long time to do. If we break this into more pieces, I hope we will get more response. And we really need to get more response. It's really important that, to know what the board is thinking about these particular policies that, that they're, they're are very much involved in themselves. Yeah, good question. Good, good thoughts, Mike. Others? Okay, thanks for that discussion. And we'll take some action items back to the governance committee for some follow-up. I think next in our packet is the Q2 finance report. And we'll turn it over to Ms. Reed for walking us through that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The second quarter financial report is in your packet. Um, I'm just going to go through some key highlights overall. Um, you might, ex as you might expect, some of the expenses and revenues are varying a little bit throughout the, the fiscal year. But overall, we are trending on budget in terms of what we expected our net position to be at the end of the year, including the capital reserve transfer. Uh, we are pretty much on budget with where we expect to be at mid-year for that. Um, in terms of spending pandemic relief funds, you'll see in the report that we're trending just under our spend uh, compared to budget for the federal pandemic relief funds, and that's because of the reduction in expenses. So uh, we are spending the pandemic relief funds as quickly as possible to the extent that we're able. And uh, the, the other good news about the uh, federal pandemic relief funds is that we have obligated all funds available to us through the federal government. And that means that they are on, are on our balance sheet and, and safe in terms of uh, the ability for us to spend them as quickly as we can. So that was a major uh, concern that we had maybe a month ago, I pointed out to you, and I want to share with you that we've followed through and obligated all of those funds and those funds are available to us. So no more clawback. I can never say never, but they are as secure as they can be. <laughs> they are as secure as they can be and are on our balance sheet now. So that's very good news. And I wanted to make sure that um, I communicated that to the full board. Uh, additionally, we had a detailed discussion uh, with the Finance Committee regarding investments, uh, but the key point is that we are taking advantage of the rising interest rates by reinvesting some of our um, shorter term investments and in longer in a little bit longer term, somewhere in the range of two to three years, managing cash flow, et cetera, um, to make sure that our, our, that everything is coming due when we're going to need the cash, but also taking advantage of some of those higher interest rates. So that is something that we uh, talked about at the Finance Committee as well. Uh, one other point to note is that our um, operating reserve is on target, just slightly above the requirement, um, which is exactly where we expected it to be at this time of year. Um, so in general, um, everything is going as planned through the fiscal year, even with uh, fluctuations that natural fluctuations that happen um, through the year. That concludes my report, but I'm happy to answer questions as well. Thank you. Any comments from anyone on the finance committee or others? Kathleen, go ahead. Dina, thank you for that. Uh, what a wonderful report. My question is with the current fuel prices, how is that impacting the? I mean, it's got to be impacting us. Um, how long can we carry on? What are the what are the stressors, and uh, what are the ways that we can make things up? Great, thank you for that question. We are watching that very closely, um, getting reports regularly on what what the rates are. I'll just generally share with you that the rates uh, are um, a dollar, about a dollar and a half, what we budgeted currently. Um, they hit a peak in March. They dropped a little bit. Um, after March, and now we're going back up in May. So we're watching that trend. Um, currently, year to date, we're over budget on fuel by a little over $100,000. Um, as you can see in the financial report, it's not a big enough swing to make a major impact. Um, and so we, we feel comfortable with where we're at right now. We don't know, obviously, 
what those rates will be going forward, but we are benefiting from um, the reduction in service is actually helping us right now in terms of the fuel con consumption. So uh, when that gets netted out, we're, we're pretty close to budget so with fuel. Uh, we will continue to watch that throughout the year um, as we do intend to ramp up service um, by fall, we do intend to be back to full service if, if we can get staffed, and that's looking very positive right now. Um, so we are going to have to keep an eye on that and, and think about where we might be able to offset some of those um, increased costs in fuel if it continues to stay where it is right now. Others? Uh, actually, so I did have a question related to that because there's the fuel costs, and I was just kind of wondering, like, if the maintenance material costs are also causing some heartburn. Uh, what ma maintenance material? Uh, so, like, just like consumables, like tires and all that. Because um, I know through some other folks that are another transportation agency that they said that their costs have ballooned a bit on that because of supply chain issues and supply problems. Costs are generally going up, um, and pretty much every area that we're seeing. However, um, our maintenance department has been doing a good job uh, managing that with the stock that we have. Um, and they're looking at, I know that we're, uh, we purchased the, the tires. Um, so that's a good thing. We have a stock um, and we're managing that. So, so far it hasn't made a huge budget impact for us. And we'll keep an eye on that as well. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Right. Thank you, Dina. A good report. And I think we'll move on then to the Q2 service report. And we don't have Brian here, but we have somebody in his place. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have Troy Lindquist, uh, the manager of fleet services here to, to give the service report. Go ahead, Troy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dina. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you to the board for the opportunity to present in Brian's place tonight. Um, I just first ask for your forgiveness, patience, and kindness, as this will be the first time briefing the board. So um, if I deviate in any manner or fashion, I, I do not mean to. So uh, I request your, your forgiveness up front. So with that being said, I'm going to start with um, fixed route ridership. Fixed route ridership remained consistent despite reduced services, so that was a positive. Um, costs per boarding was 173% from 2019 to now, and that's our pre-pandemic comparison. However, we're minus 46% from 2021. So, so what that means is that our, our cost per boarding is coming down. Um, we are working a number of different um, aspects and avenues. Um, one of the things that you just asked a question about was the tires. Uh, I just negotiated a three month supply stock at 11% reduced price when we knew that it was gonna go up by about seven to 11%. Um, so those are kind of the small little wins that we're, we're making to help offset those and, and reduce those costs to keep them coming down from the maintenance perspective. Um, moving on, complaints rose this quarter. And uh, we believe that this was a product of reduced services um, that tended to be the, the ongoing uh, theme from what we have seen. On-time performance and fixed route road calls, they remain unavailable um, since the cyber attack. We will report these when, those, uh, when that data becomes available. Uh, A-Ride paratransit ridership and cost shows that riders numbers have stabilized. Um, Brian wanted me to, to push forward that this is probably a, a um, indication that we've reached a normal essential trips scenario. So this is probably where uh, a good baseline um, post pandemic and where we go from here, we can, we can consider this to be the new norm uh, moving forward until ridership starts to increase again. Um, gold ride, no changes. Van ride ridership has almost returned back to pre-pandemic levels. 2019 showed 104 rides, while uh, this quarter we showed 102, uh, which was up from the 90s in uh, last quarter. Flex ride data continues to be unavailable and will also be updated in future reports. Um, pending any questions, that's all I have. Thank you, Troy. 
Any questions for Troy about the service report? No questions. You pass. Oh, we got we got Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, it, and I'd like to make a comment. Really, that involves both the service report and the financial report because, of course, they're they are linked. And of course, what the service report says, uh, it roughly we are only about, still at about half the ridership that we had pre-pandemic. Um, both for paratransit and for fixed route. Our financial report says, hey, we are in good, solid financial shape. We, our reserves are right about where we want. Our, we're doing very well versus budget. But of course, we are having the benefit of, of the various uh, government funds that were provided to help us through the pandemic. Um, I just want to point out the importance that we <laughs> get our ridership up or our finances eventually will start going down. Uh, and it's not something that we can control very much, uh, but it will be controlling us in the future if, if ridership does not come back significantly from where it is now. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. And again, thank you, Troy. Any other questions on the service or either one report? Either report. All right, we'll move on then to strategy. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, strategy updates. Uh, we have Forrest here to walk us through the latest long range plan update. So I'll turn it over to Forrest. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, let me just quickly, I mean, on your board packet, uh, page 77. Uh, there's an issue brief, also uh, a summer report from uh, public engagement round three. Uh, I'm going to share my screen, just kind of give you a quick highlight of that report. And then we can talk about, can you see my screen now? Yep. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, you know, and, you know, of course, we can talk about next steps, uh, the timeline for this project. It's uh, in, you know, we're getting into the last stage uh, of this long process. Um, anyway, so, um, you know, for the round three public engagement, uh, the purpose was to guide uh, the level of support of the draft plan and also to, uh, uh, to receive feedback uh, for our uh, initial uh, recommendations. So uh, as you remember, we did a lot of uh, engagement activities. Uh, we have an online survey. We did over 20 uh, presentations. We also did like eight different locations in person um, uh, event. Um, and of course there's, you know, social media campaign. Um, there's uh, email, phone and mail uh, options for people to provide feedback. Um, you know, throughout the process, we got a lot of support, of course, support from you, from the community, from a lot of stakeholders and the staff. Um, you know, I really want to thank them uh, for their support and their feedback. Um, and our consultants uh, did a great job, um, you know, to engage the community and put together the summary. So just a few highlights here. Um, you know, as you can see from the report, there are more details. Uh, but again, you know, generally, uh, the people we uh, spoke to were overwhelmingly supportive of this plan, uh, the draft recommendations. And then a few areas I just want to point out. Um, people like the fact, uh, so the plan is really focused on service for those who really need the most. Uh, you know, a, a few components like social equity, uh, accessibility, and of course, off-peak service serving that group of people as well. So, and then talking about efficiency, reliability, uh, there are certain features. I, I think people want us to focus on the overall transportation network efficiency and of course uh, improve travel time. And the high frequency um, service is probably the most requested you know, service component. People really like that idea. Uh, and then you know, some discussion uh, uh, related to uh, sustainability, um, and then in terms of the connect connectivity, 
a uh, lot of feedback on bus stops, uh, improve, uh, improving the accessibility uh, at the bus stops, uh, passenger amenities. You know, we also propose transit hubs, uh, you know, questions about how we can make that work. Um, and then connections to other services. Uh, of course, there are other mode of transportation, like a pedestrian, biking, uh, and then also to other services like provided by um, transit or other transportation providers, uh, like a U of M service, a Wave, uh, People Express. Um, and then there is, of course, collaboration with uh, municipalities and, and other partners. Um, and to improve that kind of a service integration, um, better uh, collaboration, uh, coordination of services. And then you, um, the, the last um, area uh, we heard, uh, most people uh, in terms of the cost, you probably heard uh, some comments from the public uh, during the millage uh, uh, discussion. So we did hear uh, people, you know, most people really supportive, like I mentioned, they understand uh, big plan comes with big cost, uh, but also, you know, there's a few people uh, provide feedback and they feel the cost is too high. Uh, we need to look for alternative funding uh, other than just, you know, rely on property tax. Um, just highlight from the online survey, those charts are just photo of online survey. But based on, you know, my personal experience and the, uh, the team, talking to uh, people in person at those in-person events and the stakeholder meetings or public uh, workshop meetings. Uh, and, the, and it's even more, uh, more supported uh, during those meetings. Um, but anyway, so as you can tell from this pie chart, we got about a generally, generous, generally supportive, uh, strong supportive, uh, about 80%. Um, you know, there's still, people um, about around 10%, 11% people, uh, you know, not supported uh, unless we make a big change. Uh, like some of those comments we heard, uh, I mentioned before, you know, some are related to cost, some are related to, um, you know, physical space uh, required by uh, bus rapid transit or other priorities. Um, of course, you know, this, this result is coming from people who provide feedback, right? People who are interested in our uh, long range plan, uh, a lot of writers uh, and also a lot of transit supporters. But, you know, through the conversation, we're talking about a community representation. We did talk to a lot of elected officials, you know, aside from conversation with If Sandy Township, uh, most other people we talked to, uh, you know, they represent their um, community they're very supportive of this draft recommendations. So move on, and this is just a by municipality. Um, so again, you know, a smaller sample, but overall we got over almost 500 responses. Um, but it, you can tell in the city of Ann Arbor, um, we have strong support, but there's also like over 10% people kind of against this plan. Similarly in Ypsilanti Township, and, you know, those kind of are mostly for uh, due to the cost um, 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 the reasons. But generally, we got a strong support from every uh, local municipality. This is tells you uh, the, you know, transit by transit use and from transit riders or non riders. So you can tell there is stronger support from transit riders, right? Regular transit uh, users. And as we go to you know, people who don't use very often, and you see, you know, less, uh, um, the, the level of support is getting lower, but it's still in general, if you add up strong support and generally supportive, it's still a majority of people, uh, I mean, responses from the survey. Um, so just quickly for next steps, uh, as you know, um, we're, we're in the process to finalize uh, the draft recommendations and turning that into a draft report. So at a next board meeting, uh, we propose to have a final presentation. Uh, uh, prior to, to, uh, to the board meeting, we're gonna release draft report and for your review. Uh, but I just wanna, you know, we just had a conversation with Kansana this morning. 
So the, we do have some challenges uh, in terms of you know, delivering a full uh, report, but definitely we're gonna deliver a final presentation and, and a high level uh, uh, sum, uh, summary of the, um, the report. Uh, they're going to try uh, their best to uh, get as much details as possible into the draft report uh, by next board meeting. Um, but again, we have time to, to review. Um, I don't believe uh, the board uh, wants to get into, you know, uh, approval process at the next board meeting. But you can do that as early as July meeting. So once you see the draft report in next meeting, uh, you can, you know, take time um, and to give us feedback. Uh, we can incorporate our feedback uh, and then turn that to a final report uh, before July meeting. If you want to uh, approve that long range plan before the millage vote, you can do that. Of course, you know, uh, it's not a must to do thing. Um, so if we want to take more time to discuss it, to deliberate, um, before you get final vote, uh, you can take the month of July, month of August, uh, or even September to get appro approved. So that's just a quick, um, uh, quick update and quick summary. Thank you. Thank you, Forrest. Mm -hmm. Questions on the long range plan or the update given by Forrest discussion? It was very useful information and a good progress, I think. Uh, Jesse, go ahead. Um, I had uh, one question. Of, um, you know, I was looking through the report, and there was, uh, you know, it was talking about uh, uh, like carbon neutrality, zero emission buses, but I wasn't identifying that in Appendix C uh, in the list of the most important features. And I was wondering, was that include with? improved transit and transportation efficiency or uh, is that is that captured somewhere else um thanks for the question um i we did not include that specifically in the choice uh, uh on the survey um definitely you know when people think about it, they do provide uh, at some stakeholder meetings we hear we heard about it um you know on the survey they pro we have open end uh, questions. So some people put their comments there. Uh, so that's why we kind of include in the report, but not on the, uh, in the, the question itself. Okay, so it wasn't explicitly like asked about in the report, right. and if it was included, it would have been under the other, please specify. Right, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Other questions? I guess I would one one comment from me, Forrest. I think that this is uh, an excellent update. Thank you very much for uh, providing this. I, I'm interested in, in at some point drilling down on the connections to other mobility services. I think this is going to be a crucial cornerstone of our long range plan over the next five, 10, 15 years. And the plan action here, at least the way it's worded, seems a little gray to me. And so I, I think in the future, the more we can drill down on how we make those connections from whether it's fixed route or a paratransit, whatever, to another mobility service and make that as seamless as possible, because we are thinking holistically about the whole network. Um, and, and so the more we can put into that, I think that would be um, a, a huge get for our community. It's, it's very much needed. And as you pointed out, uh, something that a lot of respondents are very interested in. So uh, they're all important, all of the things that you put on here, but I think this is going to be a real key to a seamless network uh, as we go forward as this connection to other mobility services. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'll definitely um, take that into consideration in the final report. Others? All right. Again, thank you, Forrest. And uh, we'll look forward to more updates. So we'll move on then to the CEO report. Uh, and that will be Ms. Reed again. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you have the CEO report in your packet for review. Um, I do want to point out just a few things that are 
Um, kind of moving all the time, the first thing on the list uh, that we reported on is the federal mask mandate lifted, and that's still the case. Um, I just wanted to point out that uh, we, we as staff are continually discussing uh, whether or not we will uh, impose an, any kind of a mask mandate beyond what's absolutely required by the CDC or the FTA as we have in the past. Currently, we are still following the same uh, process that we have been, and that is if there's a CDC or FTA mandate uh, or TSA mandate that we will follow it, and we're not moving beyond that at this point. However, with the, um, the high alert in Washtenaw County, we just want you to be aware that we are uh, aware of that. We're cognitive of it. We're talking about it internally to determine if we need to take any extra measures. Um, we have not made a decision to do so at this time because we're really watching how our employees are being aff affected. Uh, we do get reports, of course, whenever there's um, a report of someone with COVID and we are monitoring the cases internally to determine if there might be a need to move further. But at this point in time, we're gonna stay with the process that we have been and watch it closely. In terms of the um, inflation and supply shortages, we've had some really good conversation here today about costs going up. And I just wanna point out that our uh, Troy gave a great example of how our staff is working diligently to keep costs manageable while um, while this is happening and we see record levels of inflation that we've that we've seen in years so i just want to give a kudos to staff for their diligence and really um, being proactive in thinking about that and keeping costs manageable because you can see through the financial reports we've been able to do that thus far and i wanted to give some of the credit to staff for for their efforts in that in terms of, uh, you can also see in the report that we're continuing to be active with the local advisory committee, transportation commission, and policy committees um, in, in the area. And uh, so we're, we're very active in that. And also with the staff update, you can see that we're continually um, adding uh, new staff, filling open positions um, uh, th throughout the agency as we've had a significant amount of turnover, um, which is definitely impacting staff, but everyone's doing a great job filling those positions and, and keeping them moving. That concludes my report. I'm happy to answer any other questions that you may have. Any questions on the CEO report? Kathleen? I'm just wondering with the increased risk that we have here in Washtenaw County and the, um, the new variants and things that are out there, are we still offering PPE? on the buses just in case someone says, oh, I really would like a mask, but I don't have one or whatever. And where would they find that on the bus? That's a great question. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I believe that we still are. Um, I'd probably have to check and follow up with you to make sure that that's still being done. There hasn't been any kind of a decision not to. Um, so to the extent that they're available, I believe that they still are and they would be upfront with the, with the driver. Um, but I can follow up on that. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion or questions on the CEO report? Thank you, Dina. We'll close out the CEO report. Any emergent items? Any discussion on the closing items on the agenda? We've got the long range plan, external relationships, policy, et cetera. Anything we're missing? All right. And we'll move on then to item 7.2. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kathleen. For my own edification, I was wondering um, this year we have not discussed board retreat. Um, because of everything that was on our plate or you know the the gravity and the amount of work that we scope of work that we had to do are we just not going to have one this year uh no i i would suggest we do have one um i think the appropriate time would be after we have the millage vote uh, and we'll see where we're at and then we would probably have a retreat based on the outcome of that. At least I think the 
topics of the retreat would be guided by how the millage turns out and the long range plan and the final um, iteration of that. Uh, but I, yeah, absolutely, I think we need to schedule one for you know later this year. Um, yeah, we've had one, and then we had like two or three last year, um, leading up to. And I think you're absolutely right. We we had long range planning, which we had several last year to start to develop. We had labor negotiations. We had the millage, so we had a lot of meaty things on our plate. Uh, but now that you know, after those are kind of you know moving to the side after we get those kind of teed up and, and cleared off uh, probably a, a retreat to reset the discussion about where we go from here is appropriate. So thank you for bringing that up. And I think the governance committee will take a look at that. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Jesse? Uh, should we expect, uh, I, I think Mikey said something about planning to be done with, uh, or having something about monitoring improvements for the next meeting. Is that going to be a topic of discussion and decision? Are you gonna, are we looking to adopt a new format uh, at the next meeting? Uh, we hope we can get there, but we can't, we, we won't know until we have our next meeting. So we'll say tentative. Right. Dina? Oh. Sorry, Raymond, on that note, it might be interesting. I, I don't know if that will require board action to actually, I mean, it's just, it's a tool, right? So it's not really a policy, but at, at some point we should have that discussion as a board in terms of how we operate. Yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't need a resolution, of course, I mean, to do it, but I think a, a board vote to adopt it would be appropriate. Yeah. I don't well, think the task force wants to impose anything on the board. We want to have the board's concurrence. Um, yeah. Is that where we're coming from? Right. Dina? Just because I want to say something else. <laughs> no, I did get an update from staff uh, while we were waiting, uh, while we were, you were having further discussion. And uh, we do have the masks on the bus. They are at the front of the bus as we have had them all along. Um, a little more specific is um, they are over the front passenger wheel well. And in some cases we have designated holders. So if you do happen to um, be on a bus that doesn't have any, um, then please let us know because we, we are still doing that. You're welcome. Others? All right, and we'll move on to 7.2 public comment. Um, you can address the board for three minutes. If you are remote, either star nine on the phone or raise hand icon if you're on the Zoom. And we'll start in the room, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hello, everyone again. <clears throat> so I'd like to go off on the long range plan update. Uh, thank you, Forrest, for that update. It was, uh, I look forward to the vote back in June to when we officially approve this uh, plan and officially see our region thriving and growing as it continues today. Um, I was very impressed by the plan over the past two years, last year and this year. And I was also impressed by the amount of people when I was at the Yipsy District Library Regardless if there was no people going there or not to get books, there was still a fair crowd when I was there, just watching them go over the plan. You know, that young couple, that older couple that was there, just getting involved with the bus surface was absolutely amazing because they didn't even know about the service. You know, just watching them see the improved connections was absolutely amazing. You know, from a rider standpoint, you know, I see transit as a, a you know, a need for me because the gas prices are insane. That's why I don't drive. But, you know, for a region like this, it's dramatically grown. And the economic development has grown so much. People are coming to the city. I just am uh, uh, now looking for a house and apartment in this area just because of the transportation. That's something to even feel special about because a lot of people come here for college. Me, I come here for the transportation because you get you from point A to point B. So I'd like to thank you, Forrest, for all the work and everybody that put time into the long range plan. Your hard work pays off and I look forward to the vote back in uh, June to when we officially get this settled. Um, I wanna jump into the budget real quick. I know it's a little bit early, Dina, but we're gonna get there eventually. Um, I look forward to after the millage passes by, we're gonna have the 2022-23 budget. 
So I know that's going to be very, uh, it's not really going to have any public comment, but I just like to encourage when that budget comes out, at least get some in-person meetings. So for example, Briarwood, uh, from what I saw back in the packet for the long range plan, there were pictures of a lot of people visiting the booth. So I think if you really want some budget feedback, I would say Briarwood Mall would be a perfect spot. Because I know a lot when I was at the in-person, uh, actually the virtual meeting for the budget, I'm going to say I was the only one there and that was it. So just keep that in mind. So when we get closer to the budget, that's something to look into. But keep up the good work. You're doing a good thing. I look forward to improving this region. Also, regions are surrounding, including Smart and DDOT. Just look forward to the future and keep on doing what you're doing. And I look forward to the best. Thank you. Thank you. Deb, do we have anybody remotely? We do not have any more public commenters remotely. All right. We'll close the public comment then. And can I, can I have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Chang, second by Mr. Miller. All in favor, raise your hand. Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.